Whoa! That was easy peasy. There's mouse poop right down here. I literally don't know where to begin. Okay, a brief history of out of this van's heating. We started with one, this, nothing. <laughs> then we moved on to this, our electric heater, plug into the wall, great solution to defrost whatever needs to be defrosted, like our water filtration, not long-term solution. AKA can't, don't really want to run it more than like half an hour. Then we moved on to the Mr. Buddy heater. Highly, highly recommend this. Great lifesaver for those really, really chilly nights. The propane lasts five hours, but that's about it. So it's not really a solution if you want to be in winter weather for more than a week. That brings us to the Wavasto. Now, yes, we pulled out the big bucks for this one, but guys, we are freaking excited. <laughs> So is Penelope. So join us as we install the Webasto. Okay, so we want to give you guys kind of a broad overview of how everything is going to hook up. So we've laid it out here and we're gonna walk through it. We're gonna start with the fuel line. So this is the fuel line connector and it's gonna hook up to a valve that's already inside of the van, allowing us to not have to actually tap into the gas tank. So from here, this little spout is going to connect to this fuel line, then lead us to this fuel line reducer. In both this and this connector, you'll have to purchase separately, which will include the links below. Out of here, you'll connect into this fuel line that does come with your Webasto heater kit and send you into the fuel pump into these two cables, which will go in one end, now the other. Um, and in the kit, you'll also get this clamp and this bolt so you can secure your fuel pump underneath the van. Uh, in the, on the fuel pump, you'll also see this connector. And this is going to allow you to connect back into the Webasto for the electrical. So you're gonna grab this cable here. And on one end, you're gonna see this plastic hook, which is just gonna pop right into there. And on the other end, you'll have your positive and negative wires that are going to well, connect. And that will take you into the Webasto, right here. Few other things on this side is your intake. We opted for the silencer kit. So this end here is a little longer than the standard. And our exhaust, we bought a muffler for this which is equivalent to a silencer for the exhaust. <laughs> um, and this will just get inserted in the middle wherever we decide to cut. Our electrical. Starting with our control to control the temperature. This, from 1995, <laughs> was supposed to be the digital version, but apparently our kit didn't come with it, so we've ordered it and it's coming. And it'll be just that digital screen that you're probably used to seeing. Nevertheless, on the back, there is going to be a port to hook up your electrical. It'll just go right in there. And then you'll see your positive and negative to hook up to your battery source. In our case, our 12 volt batteries. There'll be a 15 amp fuse that's already a part of this whole cable set up. And then this piece here that goes directly into the Webasto. It'll go on the very top where you see the words Webasto, it's actually a lid that pops off. You just pull that end and inside, you may not see it very well, but it'll plug right into there, either that way or that way. Can't tell you yet. Now for the uh, duct work, I guess is what we're calling it. There's a little arrow here that indicates which end that's supposed to go on. The way I also remember is just the opposite end of this top where it says Webasto. And you are good to go. Put on the mounting plate and heat up your toes. Your toast. Your toast. And that is everything that we are going to be using. There are some additional pieces that came with the kit. For example, like the fuel line tapper thing that we will not be using because luckily the ProMaster does have that uh, I guess what people call the nipple that you can hook right into. Look at this thing. Um, so now we're gonna take you guys outside and show you the install. Uh -huh. 
measuring where we're going to cut and hopefully not regret it. Anytime you're going to cut a hole in your van, make sure you bring out the big guns for self-motivation. If you can't tell by my face show expressions right now, I'm very nervous. We're going with the entire hole option versus little holes. Will we regret it? I hope not. Oh my god. <laughs> so we have the hole we just created. And now, new problem, the um, heater runs into this plate and I don't really know what that plate's for. So we're gonna take that plate off. I think it was just for that jack to kind of sit on. Um, and yeah, we're moving along here. How you feeling, Melanie? A little better than earlier? This is, <laughs> yes, I'm feeling great. So here is our hole. And we just spray painted it so that we can um, prevent any rust. So we used Rust-Oleum. Um, and we went with black because that's what we had on hand. And our next step is going to be to hook up all the lines directly to the Webasto and feed them through the hole versus coming in from below since we do have that heat shield in the way. So our Webasto install continues. We've made the hole. The hole is in a great spot. However, we discovered that there are wires that run horizontally right here across the seat. And then of course, directly across from that is this bar, which means we're restricted to fit the Webasto between here and here. Now, if we put the Webasto right there, then this bar, woo, that bar gets in the way of this lip. So our solution to that, to get the Webasto to sit flush and be able to screw everything in was to add a wooden frame underneath the metal frame. This is our wood frame. Nice. Just an added what? So basically, we just thickened the metal mount. Exactly. Alrighty. See you tomorrow. Time for dessert. Here we are, day two of the heater install. Today, it is snowing in Georgia. You might not be able to tell very well, but we can see it. Okay. This is our fancy way of getting under the van. Throw down a towel, some life jackets. You're good to go. I'm gonna show you guys under here. Oh God. <laughs> Put your face right in front of the heater. So we're using our Mr. Buddy heater here to warm us up <laughs> as we install our heater. Where was I going again? Come along with me for a ride. Let's get on our life jacket. So I was just underneath the van, dry fitting our fuel pump so that we can get the measurements we need for our fuel line and our electrical that's gonna go from the Webasto to the fuel line. So that's just one half of the measurement equation. Um, I didn't want to stay under there and actually plug everything in while I was underneath the van because one, it is freezing outside. And two, all of these little tiny screws are gonna be a little hard to do when you're in like a tight space. Um, so we came inside. So what we did was I held it while I was underneath the van. We threw some tape on both of them to give us an idea of where we want to cut. I think I'm even then gonna still give it a little bit extra just in case, even though we already gave it extra. All right, first we're gonna cut the electrical. How do I cut this? Get it all the way back in the the jaws there? The biggest one? No, the, all the way back there. So oh, it's back the cut. here? Yeah. Easy peasy. So this is what we're trying to replicate. That's on the Webasto. 
into this. First, we have to cut the wires. And actually, we're gonna wanna put these little rubber ends and the metal end on first before we strip the wire, cause then it'll be easier. Okay, for those of us newbies around here, this is what you do. Bam. <laughs> That's how we did it. We put on the little rubber ends first and then we're gonna slide them up and then we're gonna put these bad boys right on top. One of these is flat and the other one is almost like a clip. The flat clips in to the clip, but it does it via these plastic applicators. So we have to get these plastic applicators on to each individual set. These are also different. One has plus signs inside, inside and one has basically negative signs. So the clips are gonna go into the plus sign one this way. The negatives are gonna go into the negative side. One tip on these, when you push these bad boys into the plastic, it seems like they're kind of loose. Keep pushing. You'll hear a little faint clip, click, I guess, um, which means that they're secure in the plastic. So now you can't snap them off. We thought we were gonna have to put some electrical tape around it just to make sure that the wire stayed secure, but that is not the case. Two applicators go on like so. Just like, that. just like that. Just like that. There we go. You step on and you push this silver thing down to unlock them, release them. Cool. Now we're gonna clamp everything down. Um, what my, I mean by everything is the exhaust, the intake, and the fuel line all to the Webasto itself. <laughs> All right, we got everything clamped on. If your kit comes with this kind of clamp, you see how it's different from this one? It's a lot thicker. Use that one for your exhaust pipe because it tightens a lot better and this is a lot more rigid than these plastic tubes. So you'll want to use that one. Okay, we're gonna feed the wires through maybe. And this might be better with the two people, so you want to go under and I'll yeah. feed you it? Okay. Hello, and welcome back to another episode of Under the Van. Okay, I've reoriented myself. This is, this is the driver door right here. It ends right here. It comes straight across. This is a heat shield and a muffler i think i'm not really sure but this heat shield right above here like right there is where our hole is and we'll show it to you in another angle where you can see it but we didn't make a hole through the heat shield the obviously exhaust? the exhaust is right here now we're going to be adding that muffler slash silencer to it so it's going to make it longer however i still believe we're going to need a little bit more because we've got this much space i think it needs to be pretty much on the door slash a little bit beyond the door to be up to code so i think we may have to go look for another one of these exhaust pipes our other lines here's our gas line our electrical and our intake which we took the top off for right now but these will go back here behind the gas tank, which is this bad boy. Got it, get it, got it, good. We're putting, uh, what is this? I don't know, some, some deluxe uh, silicone type product around the circle that's going in, um, just to make sure everything's secure. Are you able to like tilt it that way? Mm -hmm. Just don't put it down. two-person job, as you can see. Okay. 
So while screwing the screws in, this side was a little tight. Luckily we had an extender. We as in my father. <laughs> Thank you, Casa de Randon. <laughs> this is why we're doing this at a house with many, many tools at our disposal. So the ProMasters have a fuel line, um, a way to access the fuel line right here in between the driver's seat and passenger seat. Just a little uh, thing you flip up, pull open, and you unscrew the screws, and we should be golden after that. There's mouse poop right down here. Um, and if you know us, we've had some mice in the van. I'm shadowing it, but it's right there. Like lots of it. Yeah, like it looks like they're building a nest. <laughs> <laughs> and we're told that there's a hole back here, which is what we're gonna use to drop the fuel line out. So we're gonna need to take a look at that hole a little closer and see just how big it is. The ProMasters come with an auxiliary um, port where you can hook up our gas line connector. This you have to purchase separately and we put the link below on Amazon. And before I pull that off of there and connect this, I'll show you that once we hook this up, we're going to connect our gas line that you have to purchase separately. In here, it's a pretty tight squeeze, but we'll hook that up and clamp it. And on the other end, we'll go this 90 degree gas line redu or gas reducer. Um, right? So on one end, and the other end, we'll have this little gas line that does come with the kit right here. And then that will connect to the fuel line. To the, to the fuel line, which I've already fished through here. The hole isn't, so the, the ProMasters come with a hole, um, like access point for the cables to the gas tank under here. You just need to kind of like wiggle it through and it'll pop out underneath. Um, you can't see it, but trust me, it's there. Anyway, these two will hook up as so with a clamp. Sweet, let's do it. So if you guys don't know, we have a bit of a mice problem in our van and we've never figured out where they're coming in through besides we know that it's somewhere up here in the front. We always assumed it was the engine. However, when we took this top off, we realized this little rubber top was actually popped off and it was like wedged under here. And we're thinking maybe they like popped it off and we're coming up through this hole because this, because this metal plate only covers this hole. It doesn't cover that hole. And because there's that gas line hole underneath, they could easily come up through there and then have gone in through this rubber uh, piece that was popped off. Now, whether they popped it off or it came like that, I don't know, but we're gonna do something to like really secure it down. Oh, there we go. Pull. Okay. Straight up. <laughs> okay. It's not as hard as I made it look. This piece is just gonna pop right onto there. Bam. But yeah, so I'm gonna take it off. Ugh. You can automatically smell the gasoline fumes coming up through here. Um, okay, so before we do that, we need to get our gas line hooked up onto here. All right, once you got everything connected, should look similar to this. And we're gonna go to Melanie under the van. Oh, hey, nice to see you guys again. We're back under here, our new home. Um, okay, so we are gonna get our fuel pump hooked up and ready to go. So there's this arrow. You want the fuel running through the arrow from the gas tank. In our case, our gas tank, our line that's pumping the fuel from the gas tank is over here. And our robasto is down there, so we're gonna have it running that way. So I flipped it over. But first, what we want to do is hook up this fuel line that's coming from the gas tank to this side before I actually bolt it in because 
I really don't feel like sticking my hands in here. Oh, and it's over here. Sticking my hands in here to try and screw this thing in. I feel like the wind blows down through here and my fingers get colder than up above. Above deck. All right, <laughs> I'm, gonna, I'm gonna cut this now. I need two hands for this. So Evan hooked up our positive and negative wires to our battery already, just as a temporary test run. And I'm gonna plug in this end into the Webasto. I'm expecting there to be like a pop or something. Oh, it's going in. Now, <laughs> we're gonna plug in our control, which again, we are getting the digital one in the mail. How many times can we say that, guys? I promise we're gonna get the cool stuff. All right. All right, crank it up. Shall I turn it? Oh. There are noises happening. Noises are occurring. All right. So the fuel has to get... Um, primed? The fuel has to be primed oh, no, first. Oh, no, not primed. Oh. Yeah. Just well, not by us. Yeah, so the line, the line will prime the fuel since it's the first time it's going to be going through. So we got a little air coming out. We have air. We got a air coming out. We have air. Because this is every YouTube, every heater install video, they're like, "We have air." <laughs> Guys, it's exciting. Mm -hmm. Promise, when you're installing your heater, you'll have the same reaction. Oh, you can hear the fuel being pumped. You can hear the fuel being pumped. We have heat. Está saliendo el aire. Estamos esperando que se ponga caliente. Hand test. <gasps> My frozen fingers are coming back to. <laughs> My frozen fingers are coming back to life. All right, guys. So the trick here is, if it doesn't start on the first time, don't give up. <laughs> Just let it work itself out. It actually didn't start blowing hot air until the fourth time it like cycled through. So it would blow cold air, pump, sometimes turn off and then turn itself back on. We even had green flashing light on here for a second. We turned it off, turned it back on. Fourth time's the charm. It works. And we have hot air. Hey, wait. What do you think about it? Are you gonna be so happy? It's warm. You're gonna be so happy. <laughs> Alrighty. Tomorrow we're gonna finish everything else up. Alright. Hello again, friends. There's some new leaves down here. New day. We're just finishing everything up, tightening everything up. We bought some hosing for some the wire to the um fuel thingamajigger so we're gonna put that on get everything really secured and it's final locked position it's gonna be a fun day okay we're gonna do one final walkthrough before we seal everything up put in our final screws and put in our brand new swivel seat final walkthrough this is the Webasto. We installed everything onto the Webasto before putting it in through the hole that we made underneath the passenger seat. We went with the big hole, five inch hole that matches our mount, which actually had a ring around it versus individual holes. To get fuel to the Webasto, ProMasters have this awesome built-in gas notch that you can actually, it just has like a dummy, a dummy cap on it. You take this cap off, install this connector piece that you buy separately and do all your hookups. And so you'll do all your fuel line hookups and in here, your fuel line can actually be shimmied back through a gap in the metal that'll actually bring you out underneath the van. From there, you'll hook up to your fuel pump, which will come back around then into your Webasto and that's how you get fuel in underneath. Again, out of the Webasto, you gotta get electricity to it. So, there's a plug that comes out of this top cap. 
in the wires. We have ours running through here, basically following our battery lines behind our shower wall, behind our drawers, all the way back to our fuse box in the back. And we're gonna have our remote somewhere at the top. Hello, dearest viewers. I'm here once again, the monster that lives under your van, to show you what we have done. This is where we pull out all of our lines I'm gonna show you. Our exhaust comes out of here and actually pushes out that way and pops out right here. We still have some more extension to add to it in our muffler so that it actually reaches the edge of the van and the fumes can escape that way versus living underneath. But that's pretty much ready to go. Our intake is right here. So it comes right out of the hole. Can you see? Just imagine the holes right there. Comes right out and it's actually hooked into one of these holes that is already part of the metal frame. Um, and this little strap came with the kit. So we just popped it right in. It doesn't, doesn't come out. Uh, should be good. We were gonna get a heat shield for it. Okay, and then our fuel line and our electrical are here. So coming out of the hole, this is our fuel line and it runs all the way to our fuel pump. There's our fuel line, our electrical, our pump, which is anchored in to this bolt that is part of the fuel tank. So remember, first strap closest to the passenger seat, second strap behind the driver's seat is the one we went with because it has more hand room to work with. Um, then our fuel line that goes to our fuel connection, so our actual gas tank, is right here. If you follow it along, it then enters through here. Now let's get that swivel seat on and our actual seat, plug everything up and hope we don't get any sort of airbag light. The lights don't, random lights don't come on. And we do have the sliding door open, so that makes sense. So, success. We did it. Monster under the bed, clocking out. <laughs>